So I've got a couple of self-inflicted problems that I'm running into, so no surprise there. Uh, you see this guy? Yeah, don't worry about that guy. That's just a little plasma torch that got out of control. But uh, the real issue is um, the angle of my dangle bars here. So uh, this is going to end up tucking up a little more than I thought it was going to be when I first eyeball measured it. Uh, so with that, I'm not real happy with the angle of my lower bar. Uh, the upper one's okay, but not great. Um, this, this bar we want to get as level as possible when it's at ride height, and unfortunately, this mount is down too low for that to happen. So it's not the end of the world to fabricate up a new little setup here, but it is extra work that uh, had I drawn this out on some paper, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have had to go through that. But uh, you know, this is the way I do things, so it's I'm used to my own stupidity. Luckily, Jegs has come to the rescue here in these nice laser cut pieces. So um, I mean, this gives me a lot more adjustment than my current setup has, which is a, which is a good thing anyway. It's actually nice to have, but um, we're also going to be able to correct the uh, problem. So I just took my plasma torch and notched out a section for that existing cross member to go through on these new brackets. And uh, yeah, I just got to duplicate that on this one here and then do it two more times on the ones that are inside this box and we should be cooking. This will put the brakes on things pretty quick. When Built Specialties sends a couple boxes to your house with the widest wheels that they make, and that is a drag racing manufacturer making some freaking wide wheels, we got to stop what we're doing. And uh, I just happen to have the tires show up as well, so I'm going to get these things unboxed and then uh, see how they look once we slap some 18-inch wide rubber on them. So I shot the next town over, over in Hooksit, New Hampshire, to a uh, tire warehouse, and these guys just busted ass to get these things mounted. The wider a tire is, and the slimmer the sidewall, generally speaking, the more challenging of a project it is to get them on there, and uh, th these definitely put up a good fight, but uh, they won the fight, and uh, we got them all mounted. I'm not enough in! <laughs> So it's been a while since you guys have seen the Grand National. And uh, well, part of that was for a good reason. I jumped on that solar auction deal and that took a ton of time to get right. Uh, but the other part of it is, is this freaking car is kicking my ass. So I'm gonna bring you up to speed on, on kind of how we got to where we are today uh, and share with you some of the challenges that you don't see on other YouTube builds because everything just always works perfectly and nothing ever goes wrong. Not the case here. So the last time you all saw this car was about a year ago and that was after I had hacked it down to just a bare shell and fabricated my own new replacement chassis under it. Well, then we got into that solar project and I had time to kind of let that thing marinate and the more I started looking at it, the more I started hating what I had done. And part of it was my fault, but part of it wasn't because when I first started this project, I was planning on being in the six to 700 horsepower range and I wanted to build a light, light car so that we could get you know, a decent 
quarter mile an hour time out of that kind of horsepower. But once you start getting this deep into something, it, and for me anyway, I just thought, wh why am I doing this for that kind of horsepower? Why don't we just build it to handle 1,000, 1,200 horse and really have something pretty scary? So I started thinking that as I was building the chassis, so the initial chassis work that I did on this car was built with a six to 700 horsepower kind of ballpark in mind. And I kind of built onto that and started building it up to handle higher horsepower, but like the foundation to a house, if that's not set right, you know, it's, it's not gonna be a great house. Um, and the same thing happened to this. So <laughs> as more time passed and the more I looked at it, the more frustrated I got. Well, I came out here like a month and a half ago or so with my plasma torch and a sawzall and I hacked the entire chassis, uh, the custom chassis that, I don't know, I had probably a couple hundred hours in uh, and scrapped it. And we started with a clean slate fresh. And uh, as painful as that was, I'm much happier with the result that I have now. So the bad news is I didn't film any of this um, because part of the reason is you've already seen me build one chassis. You can see the finished product now and I'm still not finished, I've still got some more chassis work to do. Uh, but for the most part, the main back half of the car now is all done. And it is completely different than it was the first time, but it is made to handle, I mean, any amount of horsepower and traction that I can throw at it. Uh, and there's a few other little tweaks and tricks and stuff that uh, I put in there that I think I'm gonna be, um, that, that, that I think is gonna make life a lot easier down the road as we fabricate the interior and do all of that. So let's take a look at it. All right, so all of this will make a lot more sense when you see the rear end bolted in, but um, basically we are super lightweight from the back glass to the back of the car. All of this is one inch and it's relatively thin wall steel. Uh, it does not weigh much at all. I can still easily pick this car up myself, uh, even with all of this here. Uh, this loop here is where the fuel cell outputs come, so uh, we didn't run into the frame there. Uh, but all of the mounts are in place. Uh, the other thing I did which I wasn't happy with on my first chassis was my four link mounts have are much larger. They have way more positioning options. I didn't like the angle of the bars on a drag car like this are incredibly important. That is what determines the weight transfer to that back axle and whether the car stands up when you get on it or lays down and wants to wheelie. So way more adjustment options uh, for the four link on, on this side, much stronger structurally uh, as well all the way up. Obviously all of this is brand new structure. Um, you know, the main mount for the four links is all two by three inch, very solid stuff. And I'll swing around on the other side so I can show you a different look at it here. So after the transmission mount, which I've got to build, um, ends here, uh, capped the original uh, frame and then tucked it in with some one by three uh, eighth inch wall. So this is really heavy stuff and actually welded it and tied it into the body here. But that allows me to get my seats in here deeper, which is really important because of the ceiling. Obviously we've got a bar set up going on up here and I'm not a short guy, so I need the headroom. And this allows me to drop my seat pan down nice and low. Um, nice big two by three, this thing's nasty. And I gusseted the crap out of it. Everything's triangulated as well. Um, so we got a lot of structure in here without using a ton of material it's incredibly rigid and it should handle you know any amount of horsepower that I could possibly throw at it here so where we're at now is the next problem we're gonna build a floor here I gotta build a tunnel and a floor trans mounts firewall frame for the firewall tying into this bar and I will tell you having gotten this deep into it now it is really hard. <laughs> this is freaking hard. It's hard when you're working with nothing. Like you have all of this, op bars can go anywhere and picking the right places for things when you're working with a blank slate is really tough. This has not been an easy build and it's required a lot of thought, which is painful for my monkey brain. But here's where we're at. Basically all new chassis, and it doesn't weigh much at all, but I am very confident in its strength. I had to strip down the rear end completely as well, uh, put in all new mounts on this as well, um, but 
I was able to make improvements here. Again, massive amount of adjustment ability here. I've got integrated coilover mounts now on these brackets. Uh, multiple slots for the panhard bar. Uh, just a whole lot of good adjustment now on this rear end that we did not have before. Also made a change to a textured finish on all of the bar work. And honestly, that was just because it's so much easier to work with than the painted stuff. As you can see, I chopped off my front bar here because I'm not happy with where it was. So we're repositioning that. But being able to make changes like that and not have to worry about blending in to get a good finish. When you use that texture spray, it just makes fabricating life much, much easier. So uh, that's what we're doing. But now I got to strip down all of my finished front suspension, take all of that off again, because all of this has to get painted up to match. And uh, yeah, that sucks, but what are you gonna do? So I'm happy with where we're at now, uh, at least what we've built. And my only goal now is just to make sure it's done while we still have fossil fuels available to run this thing on. Uh, but we're, on a, we're at a good point now. Uh, I'm ready to move forward and that's gonna start with working out this tunnel next. I worked out a uh, transmission cross member here and this is going to get modified eventually but I'm welding it all in as one piece and then uh, end up chopping out the center here we'll make in a bolt-in bracket that comes up and supports the transmission uh, but for right now it's a lot easier just to put one solid piece in that way you know everything's lined up perfectly before you cut it get it welded then cut it we'll make the brackets that uh, can be removed so that you can drop the transmission through the cross member I was going to use the original one that I had it was, although it was aftermarket too um, but I can save like 10 pounds on this piece just by going with a bigger diameter tube that's thinner wall uh, to give me the same strength that I need for that trans cross member. Uh, because space isn't really an issue here, we're going to be dropping the floor pans below all of this. So, uh, yeah, I think that'll work. So I've got the cross member in place and then sectioned that out so we could make our custom rear mount for the transmission, which will bolt that all into one solid piece again. And then also ran these guys at the right height for where I want the seat brackets to sit to make sure I got the headroom I need, plus a helmet, plenty of clearance on the top. Uh, I'm gonna have to do something similar to this on the inside here for the other uh, seat side of the seat bracket to sit on. But the other reason I needed these big boys in the middle here is we are putting in our NHRA approved drive shaft loop that's going to be mounting in between here. And this is just there to prevent, or not to prevent, but to protect. Uh, if you lose a U-joint front or rear, it just keeps that drive shaft from going crazy into a pretzel and cutting your legs off. So I want to make sure we put that in. I figure it's a good idea. Uh, so we're going to trim this guy down. And then once we get the transmission you know, permanently mounted, we can easily just adjust the height of the loop within these brackets. Probably a good spot to stop here. So we've got the back half completely done, even painted. Everything's ready to be bolted in. That whole rear suspension is all done, lined up, and uh, should be great. Now we're kind of up to the midway point here. We've got some structure in for the floor, and I just sat a uh, seat in here just to kind of get an idea how much work that's going to be. It's going to be a pain in the ass uh, to make custom brackets for it to sit exactly where I want it. Drive shaft loop is in, and we are moving forward. So. Feels really good to get back on this project. This thing is definitely overwhelming, uh, but 
gives me something to do. So it's nice to have a little project for downtime uh, just to pick at and be able to walk away from it when it's either frustrating me too much or I just don't feel like it. And that's kind of what this thing's turned into being. But we're gonna keep making progress, keep chipping at it and uh, keep figuring shit out. So as always, any questions, comments, concerns, and or criticisms, throw them down in the comment section below me. Uh, otherwise, everybody, thanks for watching and have a great day.